What do people even mean when they say every day is Earth Day? I guess I don't really understand what Earth Day is even all about. I literally thought it was Captain Planet's job to save the Earth so that I wouldn't have to. By your powers combined, I am Captain Planet! God damn it! So if Captain Planet isn't going to rescue us all, then who is? If only someone would make a video telling us all about Earth Day and why we should care. Hello y'all, Nathan here for Measured Light. Today we're going to learn about Earth Day, its history, the amazing ways that it's changed the world, and discuss a few of the challenges that have persisted over its 50 year history. But before we hop in, let's start this video off right by asking you to so ever lovingly click that thumbs up button and tell the YouTube robots that we're doing a solid job and other humanoids should see this video. And with that out of the way, let's learn about the day on which we celebrate the Earth. I'm not a scientist, and that's part of the reason I love Earth Day. It's not called Science Day, though I'm sure that exists. It's called Earth Day, and everyone here plays an important role in helping keep our planet happy and healthy. Honey, is there any way I'm not gonna sound like a total cheese puff suggesting that Earth Day is for everyone on the Earth? Let's talk about some history. The first Earth Day was held in 1970, more than 50 years ago. It's the largest secular holiday in the world, with more than 190 countries recognizing the importance of our home planet and the impacts humans have on it. Its creation was sparked by decades of negative environmental events that culminated in the Santa Barbara oil spill on January 28, 1969. At the time, it was the largest oil spill America had ever experienced. And even today, it's still the third largest oil spill in our history. But I wanna be clear, it wasn't just the oil spill, there was a movement. Rachel Carson's Silent Spring was published in 1962. It's an examination of the negative impacts modernization was having on the natural world, specifically the wide use of pesticides and the disinformation campaign that chemical companies use to sell those pesticides to every level of government. The popularity of her book helped pass the 1964 Wilderness Act, which led the United States to protect 9.1 million acres of federal land. Just so we're on the same page here, 9.1 million acres of land is larger than the Netherlands. That's right, in pure American, bigger is better fashion, we set aside an entire country's worth of land. All right, back to Earth Day history. Just months before the first Earth Day, back in Santa Barbara, California, there was Environmental Rights Day. This was held in response to the one year anniversary of the oil spill and brought together several important players, including Gaylord Nelson, remember his name, we're gonna talk about him more in just a second, Pete McClowski, both of which who had worked on the National Environmental Policy Act, alongside Mark McGinnis, who later started the Environmental Defense Fund, and Dennis Hayes, who coordinated the first ever Earth Day, which grew into the Earth Day network that we know today. Basically, Environmental Rights Day was a test run for the first ever Earth Day. But how do we go from a few thousand people in California to a global event with over a billion participants? For that, let's go back to Senator Gaylord Nelson of Wisconsin. The junior senator at the time had been concerned about conservation and the deteriorating impacts of industry on the planet for years. He found inspiration in the anti-war movement of the 1960s and wanted to infuse their techniques of protest, teach-ins, and youth activism into the environmental movement. That's precisely why in 1969, he asked the young activist Dennis Hayes to help organize the first Earth Day and why they scheduled it on April 22nd, which landed between the spring break holidays and exams. They wanted to maximize student attendance. Earth Day instantly became a culminating moment. Grassroots organizations across dozens of issues from highway construction to sewage dumping to the extinction of species suddenly all had a singular focus and the first Earth Day inspired nearly 20 million people to share their concerns about humanity's impact on the planet. Maybe most interesting to me, given today's political climate, this was a diverse initiative. All political parties, urban and rural citizens, and people across the economic spectrum. About 10% of all Americans got involved on that first Earth Day. And even more broadly than that, sentiments about the importance of environment changed. As I said before, this was a movement with momentum, but clearly Earth Day had a real impact on how countries govern and people's concerns were being taken more seriously. 
Many things I take for granted today were founded in response to the rare alignment that existed in this moment in time, including the creation of the Environmental Protection Agency, better known as the EPA, which helped establish landmark laws like OSHA, the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, and eventually the Endangered Species Act. All laws that have existed longer than I've been alive, but they protect millions of people from diseases and death, and have saved hundreds of species from extinction, and millions of acres of wildlife from being spoiled. All really fun stuff that I kind of just assumed the government was always doing. They weren't. This seems like a great time to remind you that I'm not a scientist. I'm just a random designer dude on the internet that's trying to learn more about climate change. So please do your own research, and like always, I'm going to include a bunch of links in the description below. I'd also love to see your comments about your personal experiences participating in Earth Day. Maybe you've planted a tree at school. I'm kind of curious how that became such a symbolic thing to do, people planting trees on Earth Day. It's not like asking people to plant a tree is the simplest call to action. For instance, it's way easier to hit that thumbs up button. Yes, I am disappointed in myself. Now that we know a little about the history of Earth Day, can we discuss what's next? And no, Captain Planet still isn't coming to help. Sorry kids. With all of the good that's happened in the past 50 years, it's clear that there is a massive amount of continued abuses to the planet. Specifically, greenhouse gas emissions, drilling and burning of fossil fuels, the continued proliferation of plastics, the destruction of biodiversity, and the social inequalities that come with each of those systems. So what does that have to do with you? And how are you going to step up this Earth Day? What unique skills do you have that you can bring to the table to help keep the planet a happy and healthy place? You and your family could help clean out trash from a local waterway. You could also lobby your state senate for better environmental protections. Or perhaps you just need to go out and plant a tree. No matter your skills, talents, and passion, you play a role in helping out this Earth Day, next Earth Day, and every day in between. And yes, I am a cheese puff. I hope you enjoyed learning about Earth Day. If you made it this far in the video and we've earned it, please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification so that you'll learn every time we release a new video. It really helps the channel grow and allows us to defeat the YouTube robots in a battle of wits. Thanks for your time and see you back here soon on Measured Light.